Bannon was born in Willimantic, Connecticut on January 8, 1947, as the second of three sons raised by alcoholic parents. Due to their parents' constant abuse and absences, Bonin and his brothers were frequently left with his grandfather, a convicted child molester. They were also neglected by their parents and fed by neighbors. When he was six years old, Bonin was sent to live in an orphanage, where he was severely abused and repeatedly molested, and he stayed there until he was nine. About a year later, he was arrested for stealing license plates and other crimes and sent to a juvenile detention center. As a teenager, Bonin began to molest children. After graduating from high school in 1965, he became engaged and also joined the U.S. Air Force. He served in the Vietnam War as an aerial gunner, earning a good conduct medal in the process. During his service, Bonin risked his life to save another airman, but also raped two soldiers at gunpoint, though this crime was apparently never reported. He was honorably discharged from the U.S. Air Force in October of 1968, and afterwards, Bonin returned to Connecticut to live with his mother, but eventually moved to California. One month after moving to California, Bunnan began abducting and sexually assaulting youth, claiming five victims. He was arrested a year later, convicted of kidnapping and sexual assault, and sent to the Atascadero State Hospital to be medically treated. He was later moved to a proper prison after it was ruled that he couldn't be treated. However, Bunnan was released in 1974 after doctors concluded he was no longer a danger to others personal note, what the fuck? Sixteen months later, he was arrested again and charged with the rape of a 14-year-old hitchhiker, David McVicker, at gunpoint and the attempted abduction of another teenager, being sentenced to between one and fifteen years at California Men's Facility. He was released on October 11, 1978, and moved to Downey, where he lived in an apartment complex. Bonin eventually found work as a truck driver and began to date a girl. In Downey, he became acquainted with his neighbor, Everett Fraser, and became an attendee at the parties Fraser held at his apartment. During one of these parties, he met and became acquainted with a factory worker and a part-time magician named Vernon Butts, and a Texas native named Gregory Matthews Miley. Bonin's first murder victim was 13-year-old hitchhiker Thomas Glenn Lundgren, who was last seen leaving his house before being abducted by both Bonin and Vernon Butts. Later, Bonin was arrested again for raping a 17-year-old boy was, was released due to an administrative error. After his release, he was driven home by Everett Fraser, to whom he constantly said that no one was going to testify against him again. Two months later, Bonin and Butts abducted 17-year-old Mark Shelton. He was raped and entered into a fatal state of shock, which resulted in his death. His body was then dumped in San Bernardino County. A day later, they killed 17-year-old hitchhiker Marcus Krabs at his home, then dumped his body alongside a Malibu freeway. Several days later, they abducted and killed 15-year-old Donald Ray Hyden, and his body was found in a dumpster near the Ventura Freeway. Hyden had been found, beaten about the face, sodomized, and then stabbed in the neck and genitalia and bludgeoned about the skull. Evident attempts also had been made to remove his testicle and slash his throat. Two weeks later, Bonin and Butts abducted 17-year-old David Murillo while he was cycling to a movie theater. He was lured to their van and there he was raped, bludgeoned, and strangled to death. 
Eight days later, they abducted and killed 18-year-old Robert Weierstech while he was cycling to work. On November 29th, Bonin and Butts abducted an unidentified boy who was beaten and strangled to death before being dumped in Kern County. A day later, Bonin abducted, raped, and strangled 17-year-old Frank Dennis Fox, whose nude body was found two days later alongside a highway five miles east of San Diego. Ten days later, 15-year-old John Kilpatrick was abducted, killed, and his body dumped in Rialto. On January 1, 1980, Bonin mutilated and strangled 16-year-old Michael Francis... Michael Francis McDonald, though his body was soon found after, it was not identified until March 24th. On March 3rd, with the help of Gregory Miley, Bonin stole the wallet of 15-year-old hitchhiker Charles Miranda before raping and strangling the boy to death with a tire iron. Hours later, they abducted 12-year-old James McCobb while he waited for his bus to show up and take him to Disneyland. The boy was raped beaten and strangled to death with his own t-shirt. His body was found days later alongside a dumpster in Walnut. On March 14th, Bonin abducted 18-year-old Ronald Gatlin. He was beaten and sodomized with an ice pick before being strangled to death, and his body was found a day later in Duarte. One week later, Bonin lured 14-year-old Glenn Barker to his van, where he was raped beaten, and burned with a lit cigarette before being strangled to death. Hours later, Bonin abducted 15-year-old Russell Rue from bus stop in Garden Grove. Like Barker, he was beaten and strangled to death. Both bodies were dumped in the Cleveland National Forest and found on March 23rd. Days later, Bonin offered a ride home to 17-year-old William Ray Pugh, and he accepted it. Minutes later, Bonin asked Pugh if he wanted to have sex, Few panicked and ignored him for several minutes before attempting to leave the van, but he was grabbed by her and dragged to the passenger seat. He then said how he enjoyed picking up hitchhikers and strangling them to death, terrifying Pew even more. Strangely enough, William was driven to his home without being assaulted. Days later, with the help of Pew himself, Bonin lured 15-year-old Harry Todd Turner to the van, and there... Turner was sodomized by him and savagely beaten and bludgeoned by Pew before being strangled with his own t-shirt by Bonin. On April 12th, he abducted 16-year-old Stephen Wood and strangled him to death. Hours later, he abducted and killed an 18-year-old acquaintance of his named Lawrence Sharp, beating and strangling him. His body was found behind a Westminster gas station. Three weeks later, Bonin and Butts allured 19-year-old supermarket employee Darren Kendrick to their van, and there he was forced to drink hydrochloric acid and then stabbed with an ice pick. His body was dumped near Artesia Freeway, where it was eventually found. On May 19th, Bonin abducted 14-year-old Sean King and strangled him to death, and then dumped his body in Yukaipa. Nine days later, Bonin invited 19-year-old homeless drifter James Monroe to his house. He did not kill him, but offered him a chance of employment at the Montebello delivery firm. During the Freeway Killer investigation, in which there were two other perpetrators, Patrick Carney and Randy Kraft, a now arrested William Pugh heard details about the case and said to a counselor that Bonin might be the killer. The counselor reported this to the police, resulting in an interview with Pugh. With Bonin as the prime suspect, police investigated his past and found that he was arrested for sexually assaulting boys. As a result, Detective John St. John ordered a surveillance team to monitor Bonin and his movements. On June 2nd, despite the, monitor on June 2nd, despite the monitoring, Bonin and Monroe managed to lure 18-year-old Stephen J. Wells from a bus stop and kill him. On June 11th, the surveillance team noticed Bonin luring a 15-year-old boy known only as Harold T., the team followed him to a parking lot where they arrested him in the act of assaulting the boy. In custody, Bonin confessed to abducting, raping, and killing 21 boys and young men, with Butts as his primary accomplice. 
Despite his confession, police believe that he may have murdered even more people. Bonin's accomplices were all arrested soon afterwards, and they all agreed to testify against Bonin in order to avoid the death penalty. Bonin was linked to many of the murders by physical evidence. On November 5, 1981, his trial started in Los Angeles County, where he was charged with 12 of the murders relating to the victims whose bodies were found with a particular jurisdiction. During the trial, Miley and Monroe testified against Bonin, describing in graphic detail the murders they committed with him. After the trial ended, a jury deliberated for six days and found Bonin guilty of ten of the murders, acquitting him of the deaths of Thomas Lundgren and Sean King. Lundgren because Bonin explicitly denied involvement. King because Bonin led police to his body and was exonerated by a related plea deal. The combined convictions resulted in a death sentence. He spent a total of 14 years on death row, during which he filed multiple appeals against his conviction, all of which were unsuccessful. And during this time, he became acquainted with Randy Kraft, another freeway killer on death row. In March 1983, Bannon went to trial in Orange County for four other murders and was found guilty later that year on August 26. He was executed on February 23, 1996, being the first person to be executed by lethal injection in the history of California after the gas chamber was branded as a cruel and unusual method of execution by the state. <laughs>